Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm just gonna quickly go over some information in regards to our previous uh, quarter that we just completed. Yeah, crazy. I finished my first year. I can't believe that in next week and a half, I will be starting clinical rotations and also the new incoming class of 2022 will be starting their classes and their journey here at Loma Linda. So I'm super, super excited, super overwhelmed with a lot of emotions and I'm just, I'm just so happy <laughs> to be done with the first year. Not saying that it wasn't a good journey, it's just, it's nice now that I'm gonna be able to put in the information that I've been basically like pounding into my brain to use. So let's go ahead and just give a quick rundown of how last quarter went. Let's get into it. So the two biggest things that we had this past quarter was our cumulative exam and our frozen section. So the cumulative exam was 100 questions and you have to get 75 or more in order to pass. You need to be able to pass this exam in order to move on to the second year. So it's like the, the big daddy exam. It was a good mix, I would say this year, of everything that we learned from embryology, which was in the first quarter, to anatomy, to disease mechanisms, to microanatomy, microbiology, anatomical techniques. So really, I would recommend start now in being able to develop a good note-taking strategy in order to properly study for that cumulative in the future. Then we had our frozen section practical. This one for this year was a little different and normally we have a midterm the whole year. Um, you have to practice, right? You should be practicing. I would say hmm, I practiced when the lab was open for us to practice in because remember there was a pandemic, right? So I would say I practiced about three to four hours a week when the lab was open and we were allowed to go in there. What our class did, we set up a Google Sheets document and we signed up so that we weren't interfering with somebody else practicing. Normally there is a midterm to see where we're at, to see what time we are, to kind of get that that feel of what it's gonna be like walking into our practical, the one that's actually, the one that actually counts. <laughs> that uh, midterm was canceled due to the pandemic. So we ended up having instead, when we came back for the hybrid courses, we actually had three sessions, three one-on-one -on -one sessions with um, either Sherry or Cindy, one of the working PAs there at Loma Linda. That was great because we had an opportunity to kind of see where we were strong and see where we needed to continue working on our skills to see where we were at versus time. So from receiving tissue, reviewing the requisition and comparing it with the information that is on the actual specimen container and phrasing it, cutting it, putting it on a slide and you have to have at least for our practical, you have to have at least two diagnostic slides and staining them. That has to all be within seven minutes. Seven minutes is, low, is our standard as a program. This is to give enough time for the pathologist to review the slides and to discuss with the surgeon. That was actually, I felt more comfortable walking into that than I did the actual cumulative. The cumulative was, like I said, 100 questions and it was all multiple choice. I think with the cumulative though, I had a good foundation of knowledge of the information because I really put in the work during the actual quarters when those classes were being taken. I, I felt good about the information, but then you start getting into your mind and you start doubting yourself and all of a sudden it's like, this is the week. I mean, cause our cumulative was a Wednesday uh, where white coat was a Thursday. Our frozen section was supposed to be the Monday before that Wednesday, but then it was moved to Friday due to a machine breaking down. So it, w it just felt like it was a lot going on. And then we had also on top of that, just our regular exams for the classes we're taking. On top of that, it just felt very overwhelming for me. And I definitely got into my head and I really should have just walked in there feeling confident. Anyway, but I passed, that's all that matters. <laughs> and I also passed in my frozen section and that is all that matters. All of us are moving on and that's super exciting news. Oh, and we had our white coat ceremony, which was really, I mean, it was emotional in the sense that it really like ended the year, the didactic year. So it's like in a week and a half, I'm gonna be working alongside a, a certified PA and I am going to be 
cutting into tissue, into real tissue that will affect a patient and affect their prognosis. It's a lot of feelings <laughs> that are going through me. It was that same feeling that I had during my white coat ceremony. It's great because we finished the year, but it's also kind of terrifying. And I see that coming from a humble place because this is really what it all comes down to, right? Like this is, this is it. <laughs> so it's exciting. I'm super excited. Also very scared, but I am going to be relying heavily on my mentors. That's going to be great to know that I have somebody that I can turn to and ask for that guidance when I really need it. Oh, I'll, I'll have my nifty, wonderful Daniel post a picture here in the corner somewhere of my white coat. But yeah, I, it was a really emotional day. My family was able to come and Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we had to practice social distancing. So it was just our class in the auditorium. And that was, that was fine because they had everything basically was like on a Zoom sort of thing. It wasn't Zoom, but it was like it. They had it live streaming on a platform. That was, that was awesome. Luckily, my family does live close. So they drove me to campus and they just hung out in, near their car until after. And then we, we took some pictures outside of the campus. So that was it was really nice. It was crazy because I don't know, it just, it was like a big step, you know? And I was just really, really thankful that day. I'm done with the first year. <laughs> uh, so on to second year. That was my last quarter. And it's crazy to think that I'm not gonna be seeing many of my classmates. I think that's gonna be the hardest thing uh, that we're all kind of going and venturing off on our own until we rotate with each other at Loma Linda. It's, it's a little bittersweet because you know, you spend so much time with them and, and you really kind of like develop these lifelong friendships, you know, where, I mean, obviously we still talk to each other. We're gonna still talk to each other. We're still gonna get together and stuff, but it's, it's just, it's just a little surreal. Like all this time spent together and now it's like, ooh, some people are having to move and go up north for some rotation sites that are up there. Some people are gonna be going to Texas for the rotation site over there. And it's, uh, it's a little crazy. <laughs> um, anyway, I remember that I had said last video that I wanted to go over dissections and I really, I, can. Well, I'm gonna just go over my favorite dissections. So I'll try bringing that in into every video. Unfortunately, I don't have like the equipment to show you dissections <laughs> and I can't because HIPAA. I wanted to go over though my favorite dissection that we did. It was of the heart. I know that's kind of like classic, right? But it's, it's not my favorite organ. It's one of my favorite to dissect, at least the way we did it in, in our cadaver lab, simply because it was kind of a very intimate, that's a weird word to use, but it was intimate. Our group was assigned to dissect out the coronary arteries and show the different branchings of them, show whether or not it was a right dominant or a left dominant heart. It was really cool. And the way also I appreciated immensely, one thing that Mike, our instructor showed us was he took one of the cadaver's hearts and he dissected it the way you would an autopsy following the flow of blood. That was really cool to see, especially since he also cross section the ventricles up to the atriums, like an autopsy. And I appreciated that not because of we will be doing it, but also because he really showed us the differences. For instance, you're taking a cross section of the ventricles and let's say for some reason, the pathologist needs to see it and needs a certain section from the left ventricle, or this is all hypothetical, okay? They wanna see, they wanna see the left ventricle, only the left ventricle. And so you're like, oh, well, I just, I just totally cut all of that heart up and I don't know if I can find it. You can, they are different. The left ventricle is a complete circle. The, the right ventricle looks like it's uh, just a, attached on a half circle that's attached on. If I can find a picture, I'll post it. It was those little things that Mike pointed out that really helped solidify that concept that, yeah, we're going into these dissections in the cadaver lab as students, but we're also like as learning just the anatomy in general, but also we should be learning it as if we are going to one day gross it. So 
that was a totally like mind blowing thing because I wasn't thinking like that at first. Those little tidbits of information, just hands down the best part. The heart dissection, it turned out so beautiful. I wish I could have taken a picture. I really do because <laughs> uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful heart. I wish that I could share it with you. It was so, God, the heart is a, it is so weird. Like, I know that's, that's terrible to say, maybe. I don't know. Just the trabeculation within it, within the ventricles, it's not smooth. It's not just a slab of muscle. Like, it was developed embryologically perfect. Like, I can't, I, I can't explain it. I, I'm gonna try really hard to find something that I can share with you guys. Maybe I'll link it down below. And if I don't, hold me to it because it is just so phenomenal. Now enough nerding out. Um, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the incoming class for those that are incoming 2022. I'm so excited to meet many of you. If you need anything, please reach out. Uh, I am so excited also for those that aren't in our program but that are starting their program. Congratulations, good luck with everything. And huge shout out to those who just graduated class of 2020. I know that this wasn't the way that it should have been. I can speak for my class, it just felt weird. But honestly, like, thank you. You guys have helped at least for those at Loma Linda, the second years of Loma Linda, you have helped my ear tremendously. And I will miss you guys. And I'm so, so excited and happy for you guys to move on and enter your jobs. This is, it's so exciting. I'm so happy for you. Anyway, fun fact of the day. The head and neck region is a 95%, approximately, approximately 95% of cancers that occur in within the head and neck region are squamous cell carcinomas. That's primarily due to uh, smoking as well as alcohol abuse. In the oropharynx region, the SCC is primarily attributed to HPV 16. So HPV has many different strains, 16, 18, 11, 8, six, there's a lot, uh, but HPV 16 attributes to squamous cell carcinoma of the oropharynx region. Yay! Fun fact. <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for today. I, I hope everyone is doing well and I hope that you guys are all staying cool and safe and cool for those that are on the West Coast because it's crazy hot, especially in Southern California. I hope everybody is safe. I know there are fires going on in the pandemic. It's, it's been a whirlwind of a year. I hope everybody is good. Please like, subscribe, comment, do a little spooky dance. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, I don't know when. In fact, I really don't know when. I'm pretty sure clinicals are going to take up a majority of my time, but I'm gonna really try. I know, I I wish I could do more. Uh, it just, it, it's so much. I guess it's not really a lot of effort, but I really sometimes don't know what to say or what to talk about. You know, like, what do you guys wanna hear? I don't know. And anyway, so. Bye! <laughs> fun facts of the day. Just fun fact. Because it's still a fact. It's not... So... <laughs>